Yeah. You know, and this year is actually the year of Saudi the coffee. coffee. Exactly. <laughs> so um, we've got a lot of big plans that are in regards to this that I'm excited about. Hello and welcome to the May Man Show. We're coming to you from our studios in Riyadh, the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. And today we have a very talented designer from the United States who is living in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. We have Brandy Janal. Thank you for being with us. Thank you so much for welcoming me. And I think, Brandy, we're breaking a record because, you know, since we started recording the show, we've had lots of blondes and you're the first fiery redhead we had. I know. I was like, thank you for letting me go after all the supermodels. I really appreciate that. It's okay. I mean, uh, we, we needed the fiery red on the show. <laughs> so, Brandy, you know, tell us a little bit about, you know, the work you do around here in the design industry. Okay. And, and this- like, what do you do so far? Like, what, what's what's happening? Okay, well, I'll start it off to say that um, I started my entire education and career in the design industry. I went to, I'm originally from East Tennessee, mm-hmm. um, but I went to a private university in Chicago, Illinois. Um, I went towards the business of design. Um, I get asked a lot, are you a fashion designer or are you a graphic designer? I'm not any of those things, although I like to think that I can do all of them. <laughs> it's yeah. more towards the business of design. Um, I work for a private Saudi company um, called Adlal, which means shade. As you know, we okay. choose this name because um, in the older days that people used to gain their knowledge under the shade of the tree because it's so hot here. And so we really liked how this kind of connected with what we do. Um, Ad Law focuses on connecting the dots, as we like to say, which is academia, okay. government, mm-hmm. community, and the design industry itself. Um, So how do we do this? We do this with design research and education and design thinking, and we're trying to get these things installed to really grow this industry in the country. That's pretty interesting. And it uh, is. <laughs> and, 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 and that's that's something I think, you know, you, you, you've kind of taken upon yourself before you even started this position. So h- how does uh, like, you know, what you're doing now, um, basically, uh, you feel is going to help nurture this industry that that you've you've seen develop and grow to what it is today? Well, that's a big question, but I really think it's just about guiding The designers, um, everybody has their talent. You know, I always say that people always ask me, how can I be a designer? How can I be an artist? How can I be a creative? I'm always like, um, it's something I think you're born with. You have a talent naturally. And sometimes it's about honing our craft, being taught how to guide it, um, being taught the the proper path to walk. And I think that, um, as you know, it's an immature industry, but there's so much talent in Saudi Arabia. It's just um, abundant with across every industry here. Um, And I think it's just really about guiding that talent and helping them on the path so that they can get to where they need to be. So, Brandy, you've you've you know you you've had a lot of entrepreneurial projects. Uh, <laughs> yes, and uh, one of them was founding a uh, brand called Smug. What is it, and how did you start it? By the way, so Smug is something that I had in my head from for several years. I uh, started it in 2016. Basically, I always wanted to create like a product and accessory brand. And um, yeah, so that's what Smug is. Okay, and what kind of you know what kind of products do you make? I do a lot. Um, I actually do earrings. Um, okay. I do pins. I do stickers. Um, fun little products that you find in concept stores. Um, so at the time, I had been in Saudi Arabia for about eight years. And as somebody that was new in the country, I kind of was just soaking in everything, the cultural, the heritage. Mm-hmm. I, I loved it all. I was soaking it in as a creative. I started drawing things like everywhere, um, even like the little oud bottles. I was drawing it, all of these little things that were new to me. And at the time, whenever I was living here, you would go places like Virgin, um, for example, and you couldn't even find anything in Arabic. Like there would be no notebook in Arabic. And I was really confused about this because I found that everything I was saying was really nice. And I was like, I want to, to make stuff and I want to, to create things based off of this beautiful culture. And so, yeah, that's where Smug came alive um, back then. Okay. And, and so can you tell us a little bit about 
some of the products you've made. Yeah, uh, absolutely. From, from Actually, gift. I brought you a gift. And oh, this that's is very nice of you. Um, <laughs> so, so tell us a little bit about this product about right here this that you one. made. Yeah. So I'm sure everybody knows Talala Zaid. Talala Zaid is a very famous Saudi artist. Mm-hmm. Um, very, very creative and amazing at what he does. Um, mm-hmm. Talal um, is known for his um, art of Saudi women, and he does graffiti over them. So he actually drew this, and this is one of his art pieces of a Saudi woman, and we decided to make a really high-quality pin out of it. So it's very special. I like it. I like (laughs) it very much. And I like the fact that, you know, you have... uh you know the green you know go, going with these the are all Talal's designs he decided really? the colors everything is Talal so it was really nice working with him he's been a friend for quite a while well I um thanks a lot for the present <laughs> you're welcome <laughs> and and uh, I, I remember looking at uh, when I was looking at the smug account I, I saw there was some some other designs that was taken out of the Saudi uh, I, all, subculture I, so as can of you... now all of my designs are taken off of um, Saudi culture um, and it's done really well over the years but I will say that um, I'm doing a new business plan Mm -hmm. and um, I'm happy to say that Saudi stepped in and you guys are doing your culture and heritage just fine on your own you don't need anybody else to help any longer and this makes me it's bittersweet um, but it's the reality I'm going to be doing something a little more international in the future Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah so I remember uh, one of them, I mean, uh, that I saw, I mean, wasn't really related to culture and heritage, but it was more of, of traditions uh, to Ramadan. <laughs> Vimto. Uh, yeah, the Vimto, the Vimto bottle. Yeah, I, I love the Vimto bottle. You know, whenever I came here, I started noticing it's on everybody's table in Ramadan. And it's a very much um, a halij thing. Yeah. Um, and it's something that you really won't get unless you're here. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I've always said that you should design to tell a story. Okay. Um, and I feel anybody that's here and they see this Vimto, Vimto bottle, my Vimto pin, they're going to smile and they're going to remember this uh, story. And that's always been something very important about all of my designs and everything that I create in Smug. Everything in Smug is hand-drawn by me. Okay. I hand-draw it and then I digitize it and then I manufacture it. Okay. And so um, everything has a story. So... What's the story be- uh, behind the Vimto? Uh, the story behind the Vimto is just Ramadan. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, I think that it's nice. Um, people come together with their families and their friends and Muslims, non-Muslims um, at this time of the year. Um, this month is always very special, no matter what religion you are, what culture mm-hmm. you are. And there's always a bottle of Vimto. And that bottle just reminds me of this kind of togetherness. And I found this very beautiful. All right. Well, that's that's pretty interesting, and I, and of course, I've I've uh, since since I discovered your 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 brand Smug, the pin I've been uh, lobbying for you to design to design is is basically off of a very old cartoon that you know Saudis grew up loving, which is called uh, Grindizer. See, but for me, I come in the picture a little after this time. Right. Well, I'm waiting for that pin. So I'll, I think in a year from now, I need to have a Grindizer pin right here. Inshallah, inshallah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So with 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 the Smug brand, um, how have you taken uh, this 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 product, and who are you working with right now? So luckily, I get to work with a lot of quality stakeholders in Saudi Arabia, usually gov- government organizations. Um, I'm going to be doing something with the Saudi Cup, which you'll see this weekend. I've done two really nice pins for them and some sticker packs. Um, I'm really happy to say that the sticker packs are something new. Um, while I do have sticker packs, these sticker packs are fully made in Saudi Arabia. Um, it's the first time I've been able to work with 100% Saudi uh, manufacturers. So um, hopefully this is something in the future that Smug will be able to do a little more of. That's very interesting. And um, h- how has it been working with, with Saudi manufacturers? It's been good. Um, they're much smaller than most manufacturers, so this is something that you have to know going in. You're not getting the big production that you're going to get in other countries because manufacturing is new here. Um, but I have a lot of hope that it's going to be much better and faster and better quality in the future. Well, that's that's uh, that's pretty interesting, and it's it's nice to see that you're, you're you're taking your venture a bit more local. Yeah. Moving away from you know your work with with Smug, and uh, thanks a lot for for the pen, by <laughs> the way. Anytime. Um, you know, you, you do a lot of work on a local level, on a social capacity, and on an official capacity, yeah. to the point where you you know you founded uh, a pretty interesting uh, club called the Riyadh Coffee Club. So tell us a little bit about this club. How did you find it? 
Well, this is a very interesting story. So um, back at that time, it was before Saudi Arabia was open, mm-hmm. um, cafes were popping up everywhere. And I'm a ca- coffee lover. I was really excited to try all the cafes. And I had a thought, I was like, wouldn't it be so cool, Brandy, if you could try all the cafes in Riyadh? And I was like, wouldn't it be cool if you could do it with other people that also want to, to try the cafes? And this is where the initial thought of the Riyadh Coffee Club popped up in my head. Um, I made a post on Instagram back then and just to see if anybody was interested in it. And I was like, you know what, I'm gonna do it. I'm just gonna do it. And everybody was like, no, you can't do that. You can't be mixing in public yet. And, um, you know, having these social kind of interactions. I was like, well, you know, I'm gonna try it. You know, we don't have any agenda. Nothing bad was happening. It was super innocent. And we had our first coffee club and I was really shocked. Um, A lot of people turned up. I didn't think anybody would turn up, honestly. I thought maybe a couple friends would. Mm -hmm. It did really well. And you know, um, I saw that people had the hunger for just being social, networking, talking, um, making new friends, meeting people, uh, just like me, and trying new cafes. And then it developed into, you know, I really wanted to support local cafes. I wanted to support um, the local coffee industry. Um, Saudi Arabia is one of the homes for coffee, you know, and this year is actually the year of Saudi coffee. coffee. Exactly. So um, we've got a lot of big plans that are in regards to this that are going to be coming that I'm excited about and sharing at a later stage. All right. I mean, (laughs) uh, you you have to give us the scoop on the show. So (laughs) what what are you up to at the coffee club? So let's 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 get back to how when you founded the coffee club. Uh, So how how did you um, basically like like start reaching out to people? Like I made an Instagram post back then. I had an open Instagram account, and I just made a post, and I basically said what I told you like hey um, wouldn't it be cool if we went and tried different cafes and maybe like every month went to a different cafe and just had coffee and talked and yeah people loved it and still to this day I mean it's been years at this point Mm -hmm. and people just love to go and I really like the coffee club because you know like I said there's no agenda Uh, I'm not asking you for anything I don't want anything from you Mm -hmm. and I just want us to go and to talk and people tell me all the time um, people that may be shy or they're new back in Saudi they were away studying Saudis or um, Westerners that just came here like hey I met my best friend at your coffee club or they'll send pictures of somebody they met that they're hanging out with and this is so nice and it's really great for us to to support the industry and to support the the local cafes here i really try to go to small cafes that may not um have a lot of light shed on them it's okay. super important as you said i like to support locals i like to support local industries and um we have it all here we don't need to go anywhere else <laughs> all right so, so- what makes the, the, the local, you know, startup cafes different than, than the others? I think that whenever you are doing something yourself, um, you have a passion inside of you that a big corporation isn't. This is where the difference between money and passion. And whenever you have this passion, your work is always different. And it's always pure. These are people that are, you know, roasting their own coffee beans and um, it's something different that you're not going to get anywhere else with with any industry you know not just the the um, coffee okay. but the small businesses the concept stores the the products like smug where people that have a passion and that we're doing it because we want to do this and this is something um, deeper that you can see and understand than a big corporation all right and uh so, like, let's let's say in the beginnings of the coffee club, uh, <laughs> how many people showed up? I have to say that the first one was probably about thirty to forty people. Wow! We had a a beautiful mix of Saudis, non Saudis, women, men. We had an ambassador there. We had a bunch of diplomats. I mean, I was shocked. I mm-hmm. was like, nobody's coming, Brandy. You know. Yep. So I was really shocked. And like I said, you know, you saw the hunger <laughs> of people wanting to be people. So off the top of your head, if you can give me five nationalities that are pop, uh, part of the coffee club, where are they from? Mexican. Okay. Palestinian. Okay. Um, Russian. All right. Um, Canadian. French. Yeah. I would have to say it's a very international club with people from everywhere. Um, this is something very nice about the coffee club. But this is something nice about Riyadh. We're a very cosmopolitan city. 
And this is something I really like about this city. And then that gives you lots of perspectives and it's like a melting pot of cultures in one place. Um, It makes you become a global citizen. You get to learn different cultures. You get to learn different um, things that are okay to do that are acceptable and unacceptable, um, different foods. Um, This is something very beautiful about Riyadh. All right. And, uh, you know, mo- moving from the coffee club, mm, let's, let's, let's start talking about the American Chamber of Commerce in Saudi Arabia, which serves as a platform for the American business community to connect and grow with the Saudi business community. Uh, you serve as a program director there. Can you tell us about the program you're, you're, you're heading? Yes. So we have different committees. Um, I'm involved in a couple of the committees. I'm a member of the American Chamber of Commerce in Saudi Arabia, first of all. And then second, I am on the Women's Women in Business Committee, but like you said, I serve as the program director for the ACE, which is Arts, Culture, and Entertainment, um, which is what I'm good at. Um, For the program directing, um, I basically go through the year, um, look at what's happening in Saudi, like we had Saudi Design Festival in January and December, we have the Film Festival, and we kind of um, coordinate with what's happening around um, to make programs that are interesting for locals and for international business. We really try to connect what's happening to do research and develop things to help people grow. All right. I mean, uh, so, you know, you, how, how do you see the, you know, like, yeah, like, like a big... Um, event and activation like the Saudi Design Festival. So you're a part of it. Yeah. Um, like, how, you know, from, from, from your input as, as watching, you know, an event of this scale taking yeah. place in Saudi Arabia, like, can you know, what are your thoughts about it? Well, as a designer, I was waiting for this for a long time. Yeah. <laughs> so it was the first one. As you know, we've had many Saudi Design Weeks. This was the first Saudi Design Festival. And as you know, it was Saudi Design Week in partnership with the Ministry of Culture. Mm-hmm. And so, um, yeah, we were all really excited about it. I mean, for the design industry, it's our time to shine. Yeah. And luckily, the government is supporting this and they see the value of the design industry. So um, we're very lucky to have that right now. All right. And uh, so, like, w- w- what was, you know, your, your role? you know, during the festival, what did you do exactly? So I had two roles. (laughs) So I was lucky enough, as you know, to be part of the American Chamber of Commerce. Mm -hmm. Um, I did, I've started something last year called Creative Conversations with my committee. Um, Basically, we just touch on different points that's happening with the culture scene. Um, We went to Saudi Design Festival in January, and we were invited by Saudi Design Festival themselves and the MISC organization. And so we were just talking about the difference between art and design um, it was really nice and then I also got to come in with Adlal the the c- company that I work with we had a warehouse there all right well that's that's interesting I mean and and, and I'm you know aside from uh, raising awareness about you know the what's happening in the design industry you know you, you also spend a lot of time trying to raise cultural awareness about the kingdom of Saudi Arabia to to your you know your your international network that is not living in Saudi Arabia um, absolutely why do you do that by the way you know it's all really natural and I know when you look at these things or you hear all of it it sounds like there's a lot, but they're all very connected. Like everything we're talking about today is a bridge that connects to one another. Um, I think, you know, people ask me all the time, why are you in Saudi Arabia? I, I don't know. My path led here and this is where I am. And they've asked me, why have you stayed here for so long? And I've thought about it a lot. Um, there is a point in everybody's life when you kind of go from young adult to adult. And for me, this took place in Saudi Arabia. I don't think it matters so much what country you're in. It kind of matters where you're at at that time. Okay. And it's absolutely normal to put roots down. Um, it would be strange to, to be somewhere for this long and to not put roots down. You know, I bought a car here. I bought my first car here. All of my friends are here. Um, my favorite cafe is here. My favorite restaurants are here. So um, this is something, like I said, that's very natural. <laughs> this is my home now. And of course, I'm going to, to share these things um, with others. I try to share them through Smug um, in a nice way. So people, you know, like just, like literally just like reach out to you online and they say, you know, you're American, you're living in Saudi, so how do you like it? And then they just like see I this. I have been approached many times by different 
news platforms asking me questions mm. and I'm um, trying to, to fish for different answers okay. um, when I don't give them what they want it's not as interesting it's not as fun uh, but I'm not gonna lie um, my time here has been very nice people have been very good to me and I really want to talk about that because I feel like that Saudi does get a bad rap and I don't feel like it deserves what it gets okay and so what do you think that this place um, has I guess from a cultural and a social aspect that people overlook or just don't know Ooh, this is a big question um, I've always said that to, to know Saudi you have to experience it I can talk about it all day long and you just will never understand it um, it's a very different culture it's a very unique place with very unique people I think they're the community here and I'll say this about the design industry um, we have a community that you will never find anywhere else in the world um, people that support one another and they really want to help you they don't want anything in return I you have a podcast um, you have an article you have a show um, you're doing a webinar you ask them and they come they're not asking like well how much will I get from it um, it's a collaborative community and this is something very very special about Saudi Arabia that yeah. I, I love so you, you feel that it differentiates it from others absolutely uh, right. People really want the best for people. They really want to lift one another up and they really want to support and something super special about Saudi. All right. And and, and, and you, you take that motto uh, in, in your work uh, because, you you know, you spend uh, some time as a volunteer mentoring emerging and established designers. Yeah. So just can you tell us a little bit about that experience? Yes. Um, so I started being a mentor a couple years ago. It's an international platform um, with different designers of all stages of their career and different aspects that they're working in. Um, yeah, I just try to guide them to learn from the mistakes that I've made and to try to pass down the knowledge that I can. And it's going really well. I, I really, really like it a lot. Yeah. What's your favorite thing about it? My favorite thing about it is just kind of giving people the, the feedback that they need. And not at the beginning of it, but at the end, when they come back to me and they take the feedback that I give them, and something positive happened to them in their career, in their life. Um, this is the best part of it all. Okay. And uh, so where would you like to see uh, the design industry take off? You know, you, you since, especially since there's a lot of focus and, you know, nurturing it and developing it into, you know, like a huge scale industry to compete with the rest of the world's design industries. Absolutely. You know, I think that um, there's a lot of talent here. And with the proper guidance, they're going to be able to be up there with all of the other big industries um, in the world. Um, the special thing about every country is that they have their own talent. They have their own unique things. I think it's very important for Saudi not to do the copy and paste and to, to stay true to who they are. And this is what's really going to bring them out and to, to put them up with the rest of the world of being different and being themselves. All right. And uh, speaking about, you know, local talent uh, and, and uh, the Saudi Cup, <laughs> uh, let's, let's get back to the last Saudi Cup where there was a picture that went viral um, that had you <laughs> yeah. and, uh, and, and, and some of your friends. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about that picture and just what kind of reactions you got? So first of all, the picture, it was raining that day mm -hmm. and I had high heels on and I was trying not to fall down the stairs. And they took this picture at this. Everybody's like, what were you thinking? You look so cool and mysterious. And I was like, I was thinking not to fall. <laughs> so the story's kind of funny. Um, but yeah, the Saudi Cup was amazing. I had such a great time. I call it like the Met Gala. Everybody was so fashionable. Um, for me to, to be able to be part of it, I think that I was one of the only one, if not the only one, that mm -hmm. was non-Saudi that um, was able to dress up. Um, I really... I appreciated being able to share this with Saudi Arabia and for them letting me share it and for um, being okay with this. Um, it was a really nice um, event to see all of the different traditions and all of the different dresses from all of the different regions, from different times and stages. Okay, and um, 
you were you, you had a, an outfit on that was <laughs> done by a designer, right? Yeah. Well, last year's outfit was completely done by Art of Heritage, which everybody knows. It is a Saudi favorite. They do all of the traditional stuff. And uh, are you going to be going to the Saudi Cup this year? I am. The Saudi Cup is actually this weekend. I'm so excited. As I was telling you earlier, um, I do have some local designers designing a dress just for me, which I cannot wait to wear this weekend. All right. So I I, I, th- I remember you were telling me uh, that May Abul Faraj and Leila Amudi from Arib are working on your outfit, yes, right? Yes, and I cannot wait for everybody to see the pictures. They are amazing, talented designers. Okay. What What do you like about their work? Um. So. I found May several years ago. I know her husband, Nawaf Nassar, who's also in the design industry. I told you we're a very <laughs> close community. Mm-hmm. And he always wore these beautiful vests. And he's known for these vests. And they have all these little pieces of materials from all around the different regions of Saudi Arabia. Um, I've been looking at those vests for years mm-hmm. and thinking, I want those vests. I want something like this. So this is when I initially went to Nawaf and his wife and was like, please, um, I, I want you. I want to work with you. I want you to make me something special for the Saudi Cup. All right. And uh, is there anything you can tell us about the outfit, or you're going to keep it as a surprise? I'm going to keep it as a surprise, but it's going to be beautiful and yeah. totally worth the wait. Yeah. Well, you know, because if, there, if, <laughs> if there's if there's any place to have breaking news, it's, it's the main man <laughs> show. You know what I mean? <clears throat> well, you know that I love to support local designers. All of my clothes, mm-hmm. my purse, my shoes, everything typically is by Saudi designers. All right. Uh, something also very important for me. Okay, and uh, that's, that's that's pretty interesting. We'll have to wait till the Saudi guys to see that. So <laughs> I'm sure the Arab News will be taking lots of pictures of my outfit. Uh, well, let's see, maybe, maybe. <laughs> and uh, speaking of Arab News, do, do you follow Arab News? I do. I follow Arab News. <laughs> yeah, and and uh, what do you think Arab about News? Arab News is very good friends of mine. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, what do you, but what do you think about Arab News as a news outlet? Well, I've always followed it because it was the one that I could understand okay. <laughs> as an English reader. Um, and they've always had interesting stories. They've always, like I've said, been a big supporter of me. Um, done a lot of pieces on me, my work, smug. Um, so yeah, they're a big supporter of the Saudi community and this is something very nice. Yeah, and uh, so w- what do you think about the work that Arab News is doing on a digital front as, you know, with, with this program being an example of it? Yeah, it's very exciting. It's a very exciting shift in the world of news and journalism to be able to listen, to be able to watch, to be able to learn more about people. Um, it's very good. All right. And uh, before we wrap up, is there anything you'd like to say to our audience watching? I would like to say um, thank you all so much. Um, as I was telling Hussam earlier, I'm an American that's lived here for quite a while. I've always been very accepted by the community. This is something super special to me. Um, yeah, it means a lot to me, and I hope that everybody knows that. Um, all of your support and always including me on everything, um, it, it means a lot to me, and it's something that I notice and really appreciate. All right. Well, well, we appreciate having you on the show, and uh, we hope to see and hear nothing but prosperous and amazing development happening with you and the design industry. And the, and the same for Center. you and Arab News. <laughs> Thank you very much. And uh, that's all the time we have for this episode. And I'd like to thank Brandy Janau again for being with us. All right. Well, thanks for being with us, Brandy. And uh, this is um, all the time that we have for our episode. Tune in to our next episode and uh, goodbye.